listening to Tales from the Field, a podcast about the field-going adventures of Fish and Wildlife Service employees in the Pacific Northwest and Islands, told by the people who live them. I'm Sarah Levy from External Affairs in Portland, Oregon. In this podcast, we're lucky to speak with intern Lila Bowen. Lila works with volunteers, families, and slimy critters in tide pools. This podcast was recorded with the help of External Affairs Officer Brent Lawrence. That's Brett with an N in the middle. Brent assists the Refuges Program in the Pacific Northwest. My name is Lila. I am the volunteer coordinator at the Oregon Coast National Wildlife Refuge Complex. I do a lot of things throughout the year. And in a normal summer, I spend a lot of time doing natural resources interpretation at locations along the coast. One of my favorite places to do interpretation is Seal Rock State Park. This is a place where you can view Oregon Island's National Wildlife Refuge. The Oregon Coast National Wildlife Refuge Complex includes the Oregon Islands National Wildlife Refuge. It encompasses all of the rocks, reefs, and islands along Oregon's spectacular coastline, stretching about 320 miles. A couple of these sea stacks are the only locations in Oregon where you can see tufted puffins in the wild. Puffins are unforgettable birds with round black bodies, large orange beaks, and streaks of white feathers on their heads that look, frankly, like mullets. When I am out there, I usually have a spotting scope and a pair of binoculars and my rubber boots on. And I might be standing up on the viewing deck showing people the seals and their pups or the birds in their nests. And if I'm not on the viewing deck, then I am down on the beach exploring the tide pools and showing people the different creatures that live there. One of my most memorable days out at Seal Rock was a super low tide. So I was there early in the morning and there was a big family that had come out to the refuge to take a look around and explore the tide pools. And there must have been seven kids in this family at least. They seemed to be all over the place. And they were so excited to see me because I had answers to all their questions. So. They kept coming to find me and, you know, running up and down the beach and pulling me to and from to take a look at things like sea stars and anemones and mussels and barnacles and crabs and a bunch of other things that you can find there. What I was really excited about when it came to this family was that they brought their own curiosity to the beach. Oftentimes, part of my job is to stoke curiosity in the visitors, you know, show them something that they can get excited about. It can be hard to get excited about, you know, the small, slimy creatures that live under the rocks. But these kids were thrilled about everything in the tide pools. One of my favorite moments was when one of the younger ones came up to me and he said, we found a sea cucumber. And I had never seen a sea cucumber at Seal Rock before. And so I was really surprised to hear that. And I, you know, I think I scoffed at him, but he was really confident. So he pulled me down the beach and I, I, I found what he was looking at. And sure enough, it was a sea cucumber. I was really surprised by that. The burrowing sea cucumber looks like a textured, brown, bratwurst-shaped blob. Not exactly appetizing, but cool nonetheless. People do eat sea cucumbers, particularly in Asian and Middle Eastern countries. In fact, some species of sea cucumber, such as the brown sea cucumber, are considered at risk of becoming endangered. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Office of Law Enforcement does do inspections for international trade of sea cucumbers.
I think it's so important to get kids involved in conservation when they're young. Sparking interest in natural resources with young people is so important because they learn to prioritize those things from a young age. And then they learn to care and they share that care with other people. Thanks to Lila Bowen, the talented volunteer coordinator at the Oregon Islands National Wildlife Refuge. This story was told to me and Brent Lawrence. All music was downloaded from the YouTube audio library and posted for copyright free use by their artists. The music included Savannah Sunshine by Dan Hennig, Hulu Ukulele by Chris Hagen, Dude by Patrick Patricios, and Beach Walk by the Unicorn Hearts. This is your host, Sarah Levy. Thanks for listening.